Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to make this little turtle. He is so super cute. He turned out so well. I'm so happy with how he turned out. Um, I'm not using these. I'm, I'm going to use this green, but I'm not going to use this neon green. I'm going to use this neon green, which is a completely different green. Actually, it almost looks yellow. Um, but I usually do two different colors when I, well, I try to anyway. So this green is just a Bernat Forest Green. That's all that is. We're going to make the body first. So let's jump right into this. We're going to need a four millimeter. And we're going to do the bottom first. Oh, no, that's where I fastened off. So we're going to do the top first because we want it to look like that. And then that's where we fastened off. This is where we cinched. So we certainly don't want that to be on top. So we're going to start with your forest green color or whatever color you're using. We're building this in amigurumi style, which means you're going to need a stitch marker as well. And you're going to need some black for his eyes. So let's jump into this. Here to do a magic ring of six single crochets. So this is just a regular four weight yarn, which is why I'm using a four millimeter. It actually calls for uh, five millimeter, but I went down in size because amigurumi, that's what you do. You go down in hook size. It's supposed to be nice and tight. Not necessarily tight stitches, just a nice tight weave. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. So I'm just going to count to 12, but if you're going to put your stitch marker in, it goes after the first stitch, not the second one. Then you can put your second stitch in that same space. So two single crochets in the same space all the way around. So this tells me I am indeed back around where I'm supposed to be. Just didn't feel right. I was counting, but your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. So that's my one single crochet. Always with the marker. Always, always, always. And then your next stitch gets the increase, which is two single crochets in the same space. So this will bring you up to 18 stitches. So one single crochet, two single crochets all the way around. Your next row is going to be two single crochets and an increase. Your next round, that's number one. That's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. This will bring you up to 24 stitches. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring you up to 30 stitches. The reason I'm just doing one, one increase after another is to keep it flat. That's number one, two, and three single crochets. And your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. Next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 36 stitches. Okay. 
does four single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase and this is going to be your last increase And this will bring you up to 42 stitches. That's five single crochets, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. So that's what you should have by now. You should have 42 stitches. Uh, if you're short a couple or you have a couple more, I wouldn't really worry about it. Uh, we don't need to be that anal about our numbers. Um, so we're going to do three rows of one single crochet in each of those 42 stitches and then we're going to change color. So um, uh, I'm going to meet you back here before you're done your three rows like literally on your third row but you're just coming up to the marker and I'm going to show you how I change color so that it's seamless and um, then we're going to end up see I want this sort of an artifact so I've got the dark green and the light green so we're going to do all that and it's not hard so don't worry it's not going to be hard at all but um, anyway, do your three rows, and I'll meet you back here, say, maybe just a few stitches before you end your third row at your marker. So I'm just a few stitches away from my, uh, marker, and I know that we are coming up on changing colors here. Oh gosh. My yarn, my yarn cake is not behaving. So, get your other color ready. Because we're going to weave it in. This is just an easier way to do it. So I'm just going to hold it back here while I continue to make my stitches. So I'm going to weave this in for the rest of my stitches to my marker. So my last stitch, I'm going to pull up the loop, but I'm going to finish it with my new color because I know that my next round is going to be my new color. So I'm going to pull down on my old color and I'm going to weave that in for a bit. This round is going to be in the back loops only. So they're right here. They're let me get my marker and I'll show you. Actually, I don't really need a marker. I got a color change going on, but so your back loops are right here. They're standing up looking right at you, so you don't have to turn it over or try to find them. They're they're right there. So that's what you're going to go into to make your stitch. I need the front loop to do this. So I need we need we need to put a rim around to separate to, to make it look like a shell. If we don't do this, it's just gonna look like a big ball with legs. So this is why we're going into the back loops only on this guy. So um you don't have to weave your old color in that far. Um but I, I'm going to just for added security because if you followed me long enough, you know what I'm like about security. 
I've had one doll fall apart and it was not too happy about it. So you're just going to do one round of one single crochet in each of those back loops. You have 42 stitches so it's not going to take you long and they're not they're not that hard. Um, if it's easier for you take your finger like I do right here and push the loop onto your hook. I don't try to get my finger, this one here is actually pushing that back loop onto my hook. I'm not trying to get my I'm not trying to get my hook into the back loop. I'm pushing the back loop on, so So this is what it should look like in all your front loops. All here should be, all be exposed. So we'll do that later. We're not doing that right now. Um, if you're wondering where I got this from and this neon green, it's a hobby product. I don't have the, um, I think this one, I don't know, that was blue. I don't know. They're... Their colors are numbered anyway. It doesn't actually give you a number, a uh, color color, like a word. So, um, we need to start decreasing instantly because we need, we don't want a hump down here. We only wanted the hump here. So, this is going to be a quick, just a few rows because we don't want a hump. We want this to be flat on the bottom. I almost lost my voice. So, we're going to do five single crochets and a decrease. That's number one. That's five single crochets. We're using a whole stitch, by the way, and then a decrease. You can use an invisible one if you want. And repeat. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease, and this brings you down to 30 stitches. That's number one. That's four single crochets. So I'm going to do invisible stitches now because I don't like my um, decreases layered. It makes the holes, makes big holes. So I'm going to do invisible stitches. That's four single crochets, and so an invisible decrease is front loop only. You do not have to do this. You can just do a regular decrease. You don't have to use the front loops. Next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down to 24 stitches. That's number one. That's three single crochets. So now this round I'm just going to do regular decreases. I'm just alternating. Just to keep the spaces down. And that's just me. That's just... I'm a weirdo. So you don't have to do what I'm doing. I just find when I alternate back and forth, when I'm layering my, like, my decrease after decrease, it just makes the holes a lot smaller. <laughs> Not as much stretching. And I try to keep my stitches loose, so... I'm going to put some stuffing in this. doesn't take much, that's for sure. Because we're going to come into about the time when we close it up. I like to push my stuffing out to the edges. And then fill the hole.
So make sure you fill the hump pretty good. But this part's going to basically be flat, so you don't really have to spend a lot of time filling that part. So this is me just packing it down. I'm using my fingers to pack and I'm using my palm to keep it round to keep the shape. So I'm just packing the stuffing all up along in here like that. So your next round obviously is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. And this brings you down to 18 stitches. So, you gotta hold it funny. That's number one. That was my throat that just made that noise. That's number two. And I'm gonna do my invisible decrease because my last round was regular. So again, that's just using the front loops. So two single crochets. And then my decrease. So this is what you should have. And again, we're just gonna put some stuffing in there. So your last round before we cinch it closed is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. So make sure you've got this stuffed the way you want it stuffed because this will be our last round. So one single crochet decrease, that's number one. So I'm just going to do regular decrease. So we jump right into that. You can fasten off. So you just need enough to cinch and weave with. That is it. So just a short little tail. You really want this flat, so um, usually I would say if you need more filling, this is where you would stuff it in there, but I'm not going to because you, a, a turtle is very flat underneath, so I'm not going to fill it anymore. Um, but if you've got, oh, you know what? Actually, I don't think that's, I just, I'm just going to fill this hole that I had dug initially because even though I want it flat, I don't want it to sink in either. Like I don't want to pull my cinch and have my cinch all loosey goosey. So I just, just filling that hole. And then you're going to cinch. So just using the front loops, you're going to go in and out. Just like that. should have 12 stitches. That's all you're using. So I'm back around. That there is actually where I fastened off. So pull. And then you're going to secure that cinch. Secure. Secure. I said that weird. So come across it and then go through the loop to make a knot. Pull back and forth. It'll tighten that knot right down. So it's flat on the bottom and then you've got the round up here. So once you're done that you can just weave back and forth a couple of times and that'll pull that bottom down too a little bit. So when you weave you got to go in as close to this as you can so it just looks like a stitch. So when you pull that, it's just going to look like, oh, I'm not even on camera. Well, you guess you didn't see that then. Let me do it again. 
So when you go in as close as you can to your tail and you pull, it's just going to look like a stitch. I hope I was on camera. I wasn't looking. Anyway, you don't have to go crazy with your weaving because it's just the bottom of the turtle. So we are done that part. Let's do our front loops here that we left. Okay, so we're going to make a slip knot. So I want you to hold your work upside down. Ignore that. I already had it the other way and I had to pull it all out. So I screwed up. Start where this jog is. Go into your stitch. Find your piece. And you're going to make a slip stitch. So, <laughs> oh my god. Grab your yarn and pull through. And this is how we're going to connect. You don't have to put another stitch in there. We're going to deal with that later at the end. Go into your next loop. Make a slip stitch. Go into your next loop. Make a slip stitch. Make sure this green is on the bottom. It has to be the top. Because it's not going to work out if you do it the other way, which I already did. And I was like, oh crap, I was holding it wrong. And I had to pull it all out. And it's my own design. And I, and I did it. Of course, I made this turtle months ago. I designed them months ago. And I'm just now getting to the video because I have a lot of videos. So, sometimes I forget how I hold stuff or what I've done, and sometimes I make notes, and then this, this time not so much. I did not make a note. So all you're doing is slip stitching. So you're just pulling your loop, pulling your loop. So this is why I wanted you to work in your back loop only on <laughs> when we were doing it before so I could have these front loops to do this with. So that's it for my loops. I'm going to come back down in here I'm going to go back into the same front loop as I as I connected with I'm going to make a slip stitch and then I'm going to fasten off so there's a reason I'm there so you just need a little bit of a weaving tail so the reason I went back into the same loop is because I wanted to tie these two in a very tight knot, a double knot. And then we're gonna weave in the ends and pull that knot down. So you're never gonna see the knot. This is just gonna look like, it's gonna be a little bit of a bump, but it's just gonna look like a stitch. So I'm gonna go down into the top like that and out the bottom and pull that down. This also helps take your focus off that jog. Nobody will notice the jog anymore. We're going to put a tail there anyway. So this one I'm going to go down into the green on this side. And I'm going to pull. So I'll pull that down. You're going to have a little, little bit of a bump, but the tail is going there. So um, these pieces, it's not a super big deal if you secure them or not. Just cut them off. So that's how we did our ridge around our thing. So now we've got the dark piece under here and we've got the light piece under here. And it just looks like it just works. So, um, 
I found it very difficult to sew the tail on when everything else was getting in my way. I know that sounds so stupid. Probably makes no sense. Siri, I don't want you right now. I'm trying to turn my computer back on to get to my pattern. So I'm going to scroll right down. We're going to do the tail first. Because like I said, I, I don't know why I found it so difficult, but the legs really got in my way because I sewed, I sewed the head and then the feet on. And then I, it was such a pain in my butt to get this tail, which was small enough to make, sewn on with these stupid legs in the way. So let's get the tail out of the way right from the get-go. So we're going to make a magic ring and we're going to do four single crochets inside this ring. So if you're struggling to make a magic ring, you can make a fake magic ring, which means you can make a slip knot, however you make one. You can chain two and then everything you do goes inside this first chain. So pull that tight. You have four stitches. One, two, three, and four. They're very, 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 very small and tiny. You're going to put one single crochet in each of these four stitches. Trust me, I struggle to make small things. so. It was a struggle for me to do it, but I didn't really want a ginormous tail on this tiny little turtle. I wasn't making him very big, so. You know, somebody sent me a thing. I think it was my cousin from a long time ago had sent me a, um, somebody had crocheted uh, an aquarium and I thought that was super cool. I wouldn't mind doing that. So I'm going to try to turn this inside out. So if you struggle, you can use your your little end. I'm just starving right now and my throat keeps making these noises. It's, it's never made before. Does your throat make noises when you're starving? So your next round, we're going to make this a little bit bigger because this is going to be difficult to do. Just make sure you're not going into the same stitch. you got to come all way over here. And we're going to do one single crochet increase. So we're going to go up to six stitches. So that's one single crochet. You're only doing it twice, so you don't need a marker. And an increase of two single crochets in the same space. One more time. One single crochet and an increase of two single crochets in the same space. And now we're just going to do two rows of six single crochets in each each round. So I would just count to 12 and then you're done. So that's my 12. That's my tiny little tail. I'm going to turn my light down just a titch because that's probably really neonish. So go into your next stitch. You're going to fasten off. So you need a little sewing tail. It doesn't take much to sew this bad boy on. This is still my centerpiece. So I'm just going to, because I'm not using any filling. Like I'm not stuffing this, so I am just going to pound <laughs> using the end of my hook. I'm just going to put that middle down inside my tail. And I sewed that on open. Yes, I did. So I did not whip stitch this closed. I just sewed it on open. So find that spot where your bump is. So this is basically, your tail is going to go right, literally, oh I can't see that, right underneath, like it's literally touching that. I need a pin, it's not going to stay even though it's really super small. There we go. 
So I just went in and out. Um, I sew this way, so I'm going to sew this way. I just went in and out moving my yarn. So I go back in the same hole. And I come up into the next stitch. It's hard to find. It's so close to the edge. Oops. I didn't get down in the same space. So you don't have too many stitches. You only have six. So just make sure you're going from one to the other. So, there's my tail all sewn on, so um, it'll look better when the legs are on. It won't look like it's in the wrong spot. It just, for whatever reason, looks funny. So I'm going to go back into the next stitch. And I'm just going to weave. Again, I, I really don't think anyone's going to pull it off, but kids will go for bigger things like the legs and the head before they go for a tiny tail, but you never know. I don't know what all kids are like. I know what my grandkids are like. Boys or girls. So, um, let's do the head. Because the feet, uh, we have to make four of them, so I'm, I won't be with you for the four. So we might as well get the head done. Because again, it's going to be easier to sew on if the legs aren't in the way. So the head is a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch, so I am just going to count to 12. You, if you're using the stitch marker, it will go in after the first stitch, not the second one. That is 12. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase, bringing you up to 18. So that's number one. With your marker, always number one. So your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. So this brings you up to 24 stitches. And that's about as far as we're going for our increases. So that's two single crochets and then your increase. Two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So, for the next three rows, we're going to do one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So, this is what you should have. Now we just have to start shaping it. Shaping the head. So it, it does that. <laughs> so we're going to do seven single crochets. That's number one. So 
seven single crochets and then I want you to do four decreases in a row. So I'm going to do invisible ones because I don't want big gaping holes. That's one. This is two. So invisible decreases are just regular decreases done in the front loop. This is three. And this is four. So four decreases. And now you should have nine single crochets back to your marker. So your next round is going to be six single crochets. That's number one. That's six single crochets. And now I want you to do four decreases. So I'm going to do again the invisible ones. That's four. And now you should have six single crochets back to your marker. So that's how we shape the head. So for the next six rows, you should have 16 stitches. You can stuff this too at any time you want. This is my sixth row. I was just putting stuffing in it and I forgot to mention. So I didn't stuff all the way down because I need that to be like that to sew it on. Do you know what I mean? So put a little bit of stuffing in there. So we can fasten off with the sewing tail. I'm going to whip stitch this shut too. So this has to be on the side. So I'm just going to move mine a couple of stitches over before I start to whip stitch because your head needs to be like this. So, I'm a couple of stitches shy of being over on the side where I need it to be. So, I'm just going to move my stitches, or move my yarn over to the side. So, you're going to, sorry, <laughs> like my camera's not over here. Um, so anyway, you're going to whip stitch like that. And then we're going to sew it just literally to the bottom of that but we're also we're going to do it across from the tail I don't know I'm just showing you I'm not going to start sewing but you're also going to sew up into this area because you want it to go into here to keep his head up do you know what I mean so you also have to sew up into this area First things first, let's whip stitch this bad boy closed. So a whip stitch is generally back loop to back loop, but we don't need to be that picky about it. You can go into the full stitch if you want. If you want to do a regular whip stitch because aesthetically you think it looks better, then by all means knock your socks off. Me, um, I don't really care. 
I think either way it looks horrible, personally. So, make sure you're across from the tail. My tail. So make sure you're across. Um, and if you're like me, and you suck at sewing, put some pins in there. Oh, I just jammed that into my finger. So put some pins into the thing. See, I, I suck so bad at sewing, I can't even pin it. So I've got it pinned where it is kind of sitting up like that. And I'm going to start my sewing. So I'm going to do a mattress-ish stitch. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the doll, or turtle, and I'm going to grab a little bit of the head and I'm going to pull. That way nobody's going to see my stitches because it looks terrible enough with a whip stitch that you don't need to add to it by your stitches being all that visible. So that's how I'm going to sew mine on but then I'm going to come up and sew into this area because I don't um, want my head to be floppy. And I really think that it will be, even though I'm doing this mattress stitch. So I'm not grabbing a whole lot, just a couple of pieces. Oh, I just stabbed myself with a needle again. When I tell you I suck at sewing, I'm serious. I suck at sewing. So, I just bent my tail all out of shape. I've got one more piece I gotta grab onto. Just right on the corner. I don't wanna go too high. So that's what it looks like when you do it that way. But I've got it pinned in place. I'm telling you, it's not going to stay there. It's going to flop. So that's why I say... I'm going to go up in here. I'm going to come up through the back of my thing and into the head. So I'm going to poke out. Wherever I poke out, I'm just going to jam it. So I can't pull too hard yet. So I've got the gist of where I want it. I'm going to destroy this tail. So I got the gist of where I want it. So I just have to go back and forth a couple of times. So I'm going to go as close as I in as close as I can to my lead. I'm going to go into the back, but I got to pop out the bottom because I got to pop out somewhere. This is where you can really pull down. So I'm not going back in the same stitch because I ended up splitting stitches which I keep telling you not to do I'll try I'll try to go back in the same stitch but I split it right there so I'm gonna go back up into the neck or into the shell and then out his neck no I didn't but so don't worry about pulling this. We didn't put a whole lot of stuffing into this for a reason. Because we need it to really fold backwards like that. Now this guy I put too much stuffing in so I couldn't get his head to fold backwards like that. I'm still going to um, work on this guy getting his head backwards. But I also keep grabbing him by the head so... Um, I put less stuffing in here so I was able to pull his head back. So now his head sits up like that. So that's why I also wanted to do the mattress stitch because now it looks like this is kind of rounded on the bottom. It still is not the greatest. I got the, actually this corner I got to fix. So 
So that is how I sewed the head on. But considering I'm not a sewer, I don't know if you really want to take advice from me. I don't know, normally give advice. So even though there's a jumble of crisscrosses and back and forth, I'm still going to tie a knot and poke it down. If you can't squeeze your knot all the way down as close as you can get it to here, don't worry about it. You're still poking the hole. You're still poking the whole thing down anyway. So it doesn't matter if you can get the knot down or not. I've never said that and I've done so many videos and I've never said it doesn't matter if you can't get the knot down all the way to the bottom. So that is my turtle so far. So now with his head back, he doesn't tend to want to flop forward anymore. So you just got to move your shell stuffing around and fix all that from being squished. And that's what we have so far. So next thing is these little feetsies. His feet are so adorably cute. I absolutely, I made three. <laughs> Let me explain. So when I was designing this, so I don't know if you guys know, but I design all my own stuff. I, I may see a picture of something and really like it and want to copy the picture of something. Like tons of people have done turtles, but I just don't copy some of these videos, even though I've been accused of it. I designed my own. <laughs> this is the third set of feet that I did for this guy, and I absolutely love them. I think they're so cute. This is initially what I pictured in my head, and I thought, oh, God, no, those are going to look stupid. So I tried to do other feet that people, other people were doing with their turtles, and I thought, oh, I don't like them. I want to do these feet with the little toes on them. Because turtles have these, you know, I don't know. Anyway, that's my funny story about the feet. So let me turn my computer back on because it likes to turn itself off after a while find my feet part and again I'm using this nice bright stuff so I'm gonna do one with you and then I'm gonna leave you to do um, all your other three with the um, pattern on the screen but we are gonna be doing a pattern stitch and the pattern stitch that I chose to do to make his little toesies is the pop stitch but we're not going to do an actual pop stitch. I do my rendition of a pop stitch depending on the size of the product, uh, the size of the project that I'm doing. So I'll walk you through that. But first, we'll start with a magic ring and six single crochets. Crochets. I cannot talk today. So, right off the hop, I'm going to irritate you. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to do two single crochets in each stitch around. The next row will probably irritate you. Some people. So, two single crochets in each stitch. Again, if you're using a stitch marker, it goes in after the first stitch, not the second one. I'm just going to count by twos till I get to 12. That's 12, and this also lets me know that I'm right back around to where I need to be. Now this, <laughs> this is the part that you're not going to like. We're working in the back loops only. So again, these are your back loops. They're, you don't have to turn anything over. They're actually easier to get into than the front loops. And this is where we're going to apply the pop stitch. But first, using the back loops only, you're going to do two single crochets. So you're going to need to put your marker in. That's number one. What in the heck am I doing over here? Put the marker in the actual stitch. So that's number one. That's number two. Back loops only. We're going to do a pop stitch in this third stitch back loop only. So 
the pop stitch I chose to do is yarn over and put three half double crochets into this back loop you're going to pull up the loop and remove your hook you're going to go into the first stitch that you made so just count back one two three so go into the first stitch you made you're going to put this loop back on your hook you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through and then you're going to make a stitch to secure it doesn't look like much right now but when you continue this is where it starts to form so the next stitch into the back loop you're going to make one single crochet and you're going to pull so now you're right behind this bump this bumpy clumpy crap well that's your toe that's what a pop stitch looks like so this next stitch you're going to put another pop stitch in so you're going to yarn over and you're going to put three half single half doubles sorry half single crochets half double crochets in to the back loop and don't worry if it's all loosey-goosey I got snagged on something so I gotta take my thing out so take your take your hook out go into the first stitch that you made which is the third one over and it's, it's blurry it's so bright such such neon put your loop back on your hook you don't need to pull anything tight yarn over and make a stitch keep it all loosey-goosey and then secure that stitch that's toe number two so just kind of fold him down and get him out of the way into your next stitch go into the back loop and make a stitch and then you can just kind of pull down on that that's your second toe so we want at least a stitch in between so now we're going to do our third toe so we're going to yarn over and put three half doubles into that back loop we're going to pull up the loop we're going to go into the first stitch we made so you can make these smaller or bigger if you want to do two half doubles make them smaller you're welcome to if you want to do five half doubles and make them bigger you're welcome to that too put the loop on you don't need to pull anything tight make a stitch and then secure that stitch there we're done our toes so you can fold this down go into your next to back loop I can get into it get into all your back loops and you you should have five single crochets to your marker and I'm stuck so that's number one back loop only three four and five so now this next row might be a little tricky so we've got our toes you can pull pull the close the bottom of your foot up so we have our toes so our next round is going to be one single crochet in each stitch around but there is going to be some that look like stitches they're not stitches you got to really watch what's a stitch and what's not a stitch you should have 12 stitches to be able to get into and we're going to go into the full stitch all of it not the back loops anymore we're going into the full one so that's number one with your marker this is number two so this here is not a stitch that's where we kind of pulled so that's actually part of that stitch so some of these are going to be elongated because we kind of drew it over so that's a stitch that's stitch number three now right here you're going to have one piece of yarn in between the stitches but that's a stitch so that's four
and 12. So if you struggle to find your stitches, stick it anywhere you can stick it. Just make sure you have 12 stitches. I know I probably shouldn't say that, but I know how difficult it can be to, to see your stitches. And then that's the start. Let me turn it around. That's the start of your little turtle foot. So now we have the easy part. That's the hard part. That's all done. Other than you got to do that three more times, but. That part's all done. So we move on. Right now we have 12 stitches. I need 10 stitches. So we got to decrease. So we're going to decrease right from the very hop. You can do a full decrease or an invisible decrease. It's up to you. I'm just going to do a full one. So that's decrease. That's where my marker is going to go. And then you're going to do eight single crochets. That's eight. And then these last two stitches are going to be decreased. So SC2 TOG is how you're going to see it written. And that not only means a decrease, but it means single crochet two together, which is a decrease. So just rearrange your toes because you would have squished them and moved them. And so now I have 10 stitches. I'm going to do two rows one single crochet in each of those 10 stitches and that's it that's your foot so that is my foot I am all done my two rows so we're going to fasten off. We're going to stuff this bad boy. We're going to whip stitch. So you need enough to whip stitch and enough to sew to the turtle. Pull that guy through. Go into the next stitch, just so we don't have a bump when we whip stitch. And pull that through to the, in, to the inside, if you know what I mean. So, um, this obviously doesn't take much stuffing. This is pretty small. So put your stuffing in. Try to keep the bottom flat. Don't put so much in that it distorts the shape. This needs to be on the side, which it is. Such short little legs, but um, it's just a turtle. So we're gonna just whip stitch this so you can go back loop to back loop if aesthetics is what you're worried about. Back loop to back loop. So that's your foot. And then I just sewed it on Again, right under the lip. I mean, you can choose where you want to sew it on. But that's all I did. I sewed it on right underneath the lip. So I'm just stuffing my, <clears throat> my last one. I sewed these two on already, but I thought I'd sew the other ones on with you. So I'm not putting a whole lot in there. So I sewed these ones on differently than I sewed my last ones on. So my last ones are very square. 
and I don't like them because you whip stitch that, right? So I did a regular whip stitch where I just used the back loops only, and then when I sewed this on, uh, I sewed it on just using the back only so that I could puff it up so I could round it off like that. So it looks a lot better. That's the square <clears throat> and that's the the rounded off one. So you don't have to do that. You can do whatever your little heart desires. I just thought it looked better. So when I mean I actually did a real whip stitch, I, I literally did back loop to back loop. And then when I sewed it on, I just sewed it on using this. I left all these front loops exposed so that I could puff it up and make it look round. <clears throat> so, I also did something weird. <laughs> of course I did. So, I gotta try to get these about even with my other ones. It's not, they're not the easiest things to get sewn on. I got quite a bit of one, two, three, four stitches in between there. I got three in between there. So I might have to get a little closer to the tail. Maybe not that close. Oh, so hard to tell when it's not quite sewn on. All right, so. This is how I sewed them on. I used, and this is just for added security, I actually used this piece to sew on both legs, and then I used this piece to round off the corner and meet somewhere in the middle to tie in a knot. So, I'm going to do just right underneath here like I did the other side, but I'm only using the back part. I'm not going to use these. That's my front loops. So first, because I'm already on a corner, I'm going to go down and I'm going to pop out a stitch. So I'm going to be moving my yarn. I go back into the same hole and come out on the corner. And you only need a few stitches. It doesn't take much. And then go back down the hole just using the back part of the leg. So now I can pull that as much as I want without worrying about making the light look funny because I've got the front part that I can puff out and make round. Do you understand what I mean? You will if you do it. You'll totally understand what I mean if you do it. So that's all pulled down at the back but I still got these front loops. So I'm gonna go back up here I'm going to go into the corner again, just in a different spot. I'm going to kind of come down to the side, but back under here. Because, like I said, I want to round this off. I'm going to go down into the doll. And I'm going to pop out somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to pull. Now I'm able to puff up this front part of the foot. That seems so bright. This neon green is really bright. So now I get to puff up this front part of the the foot and make it look round and not completely flat. And then I just moved my yarn again, went down the same hole and moved my yarn or moved my yeah, moving my yarn, moving my needle up here where I'm going to do the same thing. And now I'm able to puff that up so it doesn't look so square. And then <clears throat> I'm going to take this piece, which you don't really need it to be this long, but if you're not doing it like me, then... 
So this, just you go down into the doll as close as you can to that and attempt to come out the same hole, but I split the yarn, so I'm probably going to struggle. That's one thing you got to watch, is that you don't split the yarn, and I did. So, not good. So now I got my two pieces. My legs are sewn on. I'm just going to cut this down a little bit because it's a little long. I'm going to tie my knot. And I hope I can poke it down, but I don't think, I think I split the yarn, so I'm not. Anyway, make a double knot. Cut it off, leaving some nubbies. And poke it down. Oh, maybe I will be able to poke it down. I got lucky. So, there's my turtle. With my legs. So, I think those legs look a lot better being done like that. Than being done like this. I gotta fix his head still. They feel more secure, too. I don't know why. This turtle's turning out way better. So, the last thing we need to do is give this guy some eyes. A couple of eyes and we're all done. So, I just took a piece of black. I, don't, I probably don't need to be that long, but I always have extra just in case. So, I'm going to tie a knot at one end. If you did the dinosaur with me, the sleeping dinosaur, I'm going to do it the exact same way. Not much to a turtle in his eyes, so... Doesn't matter where you go in, it just matters where you pop out. So, pick a spot... ...to pop out. Don't pull this in, we're going to poke it in. And then give him his eyes. You can scooch across. Just try to keep it even. So just tiny little eyes. And then... And then poke out somewhere. Just like that. Tiny little eyes. So... You can tie this in a knot. We'll poke both of these down. Cut it off so there's some nubbies. I don't have to be that long. So I didn't really make this knot tight, but poke it down into the stuffing far enough that you're not going to see it. Just like that. Pop your face back out. And we have a tiny little turtle. Isn't he cute? I absolutely love this guy. He's so super cute. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.